Ugh, it was such a hard day today. I finally completed most of the paperwork that I had to do. I didn't know that being a sensei and an advisor at the same time could be this difficult. But I can't complain. I was always assigned to this job, and I must cooperate. I woke up early this morning just to work on these, and I was considering today as the day when I have time to myself, since I always go around Kivotos and help my students with whatever they need. Don't get me wrong, I love hanging out and helping my students. It's just that every person needs to have at least one break from something important, right? Before taking a proper break, I still have a few more things to do, since working on paperwork isn't a break. I think after I'm done today, I can go to Shiba Seki Ramen, the ramen shop where Serika works part-time. I know that the girls from Abidos will not be happy that I went by myself, but I need some time to myself too, don't I? Besides, I only have enough money just to pay for one bowl of ramen. The other day, when I was taking a jog around Kivotos, I saw that they advertised so many different flavors. I must be in heaven or something. The ramen there tastes so good, so I know those flavors must be delicious. Don't forget about me, Joshua Sensei. Save some ramen for me. <laughs> Don't worry, Arona. I will give you some. Enough talk. I need to finish this paperwork. Alright, I just have to do this. And... I'm done. I'm finally done. Whew, man, that was a long day of just non-stop paperwork. I think I'll have to take a shower after this. I really need one. Anyways, it's time to take a break. It was a cloudy yet sunny day. There wasn't much chaos going on right now in the district. Even the gangsters and thugs are calm, and aren't doing anything to harm any citizens. It seems rather strange that things are ordinary today. I greeted the citizens who were walking by, and avoided some people who may cause trouble with me. I'm currently walking around with a more casual look compared to my usual uniform before my departure. I showered quickly and dressed in jeans, a zip-up jacket, and a white shirt underneath. To avoid appearing like a stranger though, I brought my Shally ID. While walking, I checked my phone and discovered numerous unread messages from students wanting to hang out with me. I wasn't able to respond to any of them since I was extremely busy today. I jilted an apology to them and stated that I had too much paperwork that I had to catch up on. I hope they understand a sensei like me is extremely busy. As I continued walking, I came across a shadowy figure staring at me from afar. I thought it was someone like Serena or Izuna, but the more I walked closer to the figure, I felt this sense of discomfort. I quickly yelled out to them. Um, hello? Who are you? The shadowy figure quickly dashed away. I thought it was strange, but I quickly ignored it and moved on to what was more important, putting food in my stomach. I then saw the ramen shop close to here, but before I proceeded to order, I saw the shadowy figure again. This time, they were behind the bushes. I sauntered up to them, but they dashed away again. I thought it was just one of my students, so I decided to ignore it and focus on ordering my ramen. Wow, that ramen tasted great. It was a shame that Serika wasn't in the ramen shop today. I guess a lot of my students are busy today. I wanted to go around Kivtos a bit more, so I continued walking down the street until I touched shoulders with a gangster. She had ice cream in her hand and it plummeted to the ground. She yelled at me and explained that the ice cream she had was a limited time flavor. She was very unhappy. I told her in a panicked tone, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. Look, I'll buy you a new one, I promise. Ugh, I felt the sense of guilt within me. I didn't want to make any of my students feel disappointed, especially the ones that may cause trouble. Suddenly, a tremendous explosion appeared. The three gangsters fainted, and I was standing there left baffled by what happened. 
I hurried away as soon as possible, as I reached another area of this district. A student told me I couldn't go to this area since this area was restricted because of construction. She was pretty vicious with her words, so I walked away again. But when I looked back, I saw gunshots. The bullets hit her, and she fainted. I quickly thought to myself that I was in danger. I ran away from the situation and found a safe spot. And then... An explosion. Another one? I ran away fast as more gunshots were becoming prevalent. I saw some thugs who were there, and they greeted me. They noticed something was up, and I told them to run. However, it was too late. Another explosion hit, and they fainted. I ran as fast as possible, away from the debris. I went to another secluded area, but another explosion hit. I went to another one, and another explosion hit. There was no way to avoid any of these explosions! I felt that this day couldn't get any worse. I then said screw it, and ran as fast as I could, not stopping until these explosions and gunshots are no more. <sighs> I'm about to collapse from exhaustion. Are the explosions done yet? Did I escape them? I was far away from the district I was last in. I'm hopefully safe for now, but I knew it wouldn't be the case for long, because another explosion appeared. Shock ran through me. I thought I was far enough from the danger, but I guess I was unlucky. We finally meet again, my darling. Wait. That couldn't be. I was thinking. This particular set of explosions and the gunshots were finally enough to know that this had to be a student I was familiar with. And the voice was way too familiar. Soon enough, there she was. Walking through the thick smoke with a fox mask on her face. Joshua Sensei, we finally reunited. It was Wakamo Kosaka, one of the seven prisoners. Wakamo, I had a small hunch it would be you. Wakamo of all people dared to hurt other people, as well as forced me to run to this far area of Kivatos that I didn't even know existed. I felt a little annoyed that this had to happen. I expected no behavior like this despite the last time we talked and me telling her to calm down with the destructive behavior. Wakamo said, Darling, I came here to see you. We're finally away from these people. No one can intervene now. I stepped back a bit. Wakamo, didn't I tell you last time to not hurt any innocent bystanders? I just wanted to see you again. You know how much my heart aches for you. Wakamo continues smiling at me innocently. I can't believe this. Don't worry, my darling. Now come here. Come closer to me. Just a little closer. Wakamo was going manic. Smoke and fire surrounded us. I had no way to leave the area. I wanted to, but I couldn't. As Wakamo inches closer to me, I stand back aggressively. Wakamo, stand back a bit. Don't come close to me right now. Huh? Darling, are you okay? Okay? <sighs> no, I'm not okay. You know how insane this is, right? Joshua Sensei, why are you yelling at me all of a sudden? Wakamo, I just wanted to have a nice relaxing day after work with no chaos. And then I have to witness you hurt others who weren't doing anything. Can't you see how wrong that is? I know, but I was only doing what I thought would make you happy. If that means hurting those pathetic tests, then so be it. Besides, they deserve it anyway. Again, Wakamo's excuses would always relate to her love for me. It's been like that ever since Valentine's Day. It was a day I'll never forget, when Wakamo continued causing chaos around Kibatos because she wanted to give me chocolates. I knew this time though, it was more unreasonable. She had no justification to hurt anyone. <sighs> Wakamo, if you keep doing this, I have no choice but to cut ties with you. Wakamo's eyes widened. She couldn't respond to what I said. It took about a few minutes for her to respond. But Joshua Setsai, I need you to know that I love you. These people were trying to take you away from me. You need to know that. I was just protecting our love. But at the expense of others? You see, darling, they don't mean anything to me. You are far more important to me. Certainly you are far more precious to me than you are to those other... harlots. Look, I know you can be violent just because you want to love me. But you can't just go around and throw explosions or shoot people. Someone might get legitimately hurt if you keep doing that. An unfortunate casualty. But it does not matter to me, darling. You are my priority above all, and no other could concern me. Um... Please don't tell me you find fault in my devotion. I would give anything for your happiness. 
I was shocked. This is not the Wakamo I know. Wakamo would always react to this negatively, but she's responding to me differently. What's happening? This isn't the Wakamo I know! As soon as I could say anything, Wakamo pecked me on the lips. The Wakamo? I felt the lipstick that she had on my lips. I couldn't believe it. My first kiss has been stolen by a persistent fox girl. I finally took your first kiss, my darling. It was a sign of affection. It means I love you. I love you, Joshua Sensei. Now let me give you more of my sweet kisses. I flinched and quickly wiped the lipstick off my lips. Wakamo didn't like that I did that. Joshua Sensei, why are you wiping your lips? Didn't you like it? Wakamo, look, I understand everything. I do. Huh? You do? That means you love me too, right? But look, I understand your feelings, but honestly, I don't think we can work this out. What? What do you mean? Wakamo, I only want what's best for you. And if you get into a relationship with me, it's going to anger everyone from Kivitos. Everyone will know this relationship, and everyone will try to hurt you. I just want to keep you safe as your sensei. Please understand that. I can't fall in love with a student, especially when that person always goes to prison. Wakamo gave me an insured smile. Joshua Sensei, my precious darling, you don't know what links I'll go to for our love. I'm willing to do anything for you. If anyone comes between us, I'll just have to extinguish them all. Wakamo, you can't do that. I won't let you. Oh, well, you're so cute, darling. But too bad. I will do everything just for our relationship. Now come here. Give your lover a sweet peck on the lips. I promise I won't bite too hard. While I was standing there, just processing what I just heard, Wakamo pushed me to the ground. She then crawls up to me and prepares to do what she wants with me. Don't underestimate me, Joshua Sensei. I will do whatever it takes to win your heart again. She begins to kiss me again, but this time more aggressively. I tried to resist, but she put her arms around my neck and started making out with me passionately. After minutes of torture, I used whatever strength I had to push her away from me. When I was able to finally see the afternoon skies, I quickly got up and looked at her. She was glaring at me with a betrayed expression. You are so ungrateful, darling. How dare you reject me like this? After everything I've done for you? No, I won't let this happen. Darling, you all love me. Come to me. She then sprinted towards me and grabbed my right arm. She attempted to kiss me again, but I pushed her away and ran away at full speed. The fire was slowly clearing up, but the smoke was still there. It was hard at first to see anything, but I ran as fast as possible away from Wakamo. Unfortunately, another explosion hits, but this time, I felt dizzy, and I couldn't see anything at all. Afterwards, I collapsed on the floor from exhaustion. My darling, we can finally be together. <sighs> what happened to me? Huh? What? Where am I? I woke up in a dark room. I tried to get up, but I noticed that my arms were tied to the bed. As I continued to look around and find a way to escape this hell, the door suddenly opens revealing a kimono wearing Wakamo. You're finally awake, my darling. Wakamo walked up to me while I was shaken in fear. She then looked at me with a concerned look. Joshua Sensei, are you feeling away? Right? You seem terrified. Wakamo. What is this place? Why did you bring me here? Oh well, you're in my house. It took a lot of effort just to bring you here, but it was worth it. Oh my god, I still get butterflies in my stomach. I can't believe I get to have my darling alone. Her house? I'm not familiar with this place. I do walk her home, but I never visited the inside of her home ever, so I guess I'm baffled to see what one of her rooms look like. What the hell? That's not what I'm supposed to think of right now. I'm completely tied up! Wakamo, please, untie me. I swear, I won't tell anyone. My darling, it's alright. You don't have to be scared of me. I won't hurt you. Wakamo gave me another peck on the lips, and I just sat there and let it happen. I couldn't do anything because of these stupid ropes on my wrists. Damn it. I don't know what to do now. I'm completely trapped in Wakamo's arms. I don't want to do anything to hurt her, but at the same time, I don't want to be kept against my will. As she let go of me, she gave me a soft smile and said to me, My darling, I love you. You're mine forever. She then continues making out with me and slowly reveals a bit of under her kimono. What happens next is why I never tell what actually happened to me, even to my children. And to tell you the truth, 
I was forced to marry Wakamo soon after this incident. We have a happy family together, if you even want to call it happy. I know that if they know the truth that this love was forced by Wakamo, my children would look at her differently. But I guess this is a secret I need to keep. I had to make sure Wakamo doesn't face any sort of punishment because if I did reveal it, God knows what my students would do. But right now, I have to spend eternity with the fox girl herself.